this is the camper that made me four thousand dollars in less than four days let's dive in welcome to the weekend truck and youtube channel um so yeah you heard it this camper put me over four thousand dollars in less than four days um and we're gonna talk about it can you make money in the rv transporter world as a professional driver the answer is yes anybody that says well it depends and yada yada i don't know or, or you're reading forums and oh, there's no money in there just go get in a semi although i have no experience with really any professional driving uh, let alone semi driving I've been doing this for 29 days now. Um, these past, like this last run, uh, brought in, again, with adding this camper, um, because it's, if you watch my last video of uh, dropping off my Idaho uh, camper, I, I talked about, you know, making sense between, you know, do I just deadhead home? Or uh, does it make sense with what the pay rate is, the mileage difference, to hook up on a, I mean, it was on the back load or the back haul, but it's a new camper going down to SoCal. Um, but, you know, does it make sense? Well, it did. And it's the reason why I went from a, I believe 31 and some change hundred dollar run to just over four thousand dollars and the reality of where I'm at in this uh, I'm totally new so some disclaimers I'm not I, I didn't go buy a brand new truck uh, I'm not leasing on for 22 or 21 cents a mile with uh, enterprise rental to have a new truck and the you know worries worry free thoughts of breaking down um, I have a truck that is my truck payment is $263 a month um, so it's like a normal car payment uh, and I think that there is a there is a lucrative way of using the enterprise uh, rental setup and I think I'm going to explore that idea about six months from now when I can get just a little more drive time under my belt and get a flow for things or uh, a feel for for things and the flow of it uh, but I do think there's a uh, there's, there's a good niche for that uh, I don't think it is maybe the best option for somebody that's just doing Tollways, uh, because it's twenty-two cents right out of your your pay rate, and then if you're driving any any unloaded miles, you're just paying twenty-two cents to be driving around in a, a nice new truck. Uh, if you're treating this like a business, that's not smart business. Now I know, I know. You're gonna say, you're gonna hear people say, yeah, but you buy an old truck and you're gonna have, you're gonna have maintenance. Hey, cool story, bro. Uh, I'd rather pay for maintenance as it comes up because I take 15% out of all my runs and set it aside into just a maintenance savings account. Um, I'd rather pay for them as they come up than pay, what is it, uh, a minimum, of 5,000 miles that you have to run with the Enterprise so you know you're you're paying a thousand plus sometimes you're paying two to three thousand dollars a month uh, that's insane so I get it. it it may be the only option for some people because I from what I hear it's super easy to get into um, you put like three thousand or thirty five hundred thousand 
500 down, uh, and then it's just you're you're driving. Um, but that didn't make the most business sense for me. Uh, I traded my half ton in and got a three quarter ton, 141,000 miles on it. Uh, again, there's a whole nother story behind the about 5,000 if you don't count uh, the tuner and some other stuff that I had done to it uh, to get it ready. But that's just because I was misled by Shiesty uh, used car salesman. Uh, and not that all used car salesmen are bad, but this guy just doesn't do his due diligence. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Um, so, the first load that I took up to Idaho from Elkhart was, I think, a buck. 65 or a buck seven 155 or 165 a mile again so it was right at like 3100 and then uh, it, it made sense just looking at the map the amount of time I had left for when I have to be back to add a backhaul that just you know is, is gonna keep me away from home a little bit longer about a, an extra day um, and so that put me at over 4,000. So with all of that, right now I'm at $407 in gas for these loads. And my auxiliary tank is empty and I'm at like three quarters of a tank. So I will start searching for fuel up places that I can uh, get for under hopefully under a buck 90 at the worst uh, but if that's the case I'm gonna kind of fuel up a little more frequent until I can get under a buck 80 I'd settle for a buck 80 85 really um, to fill everything up you know the, the auxiliary tank and, and, and all so can you make money in RV transporting uh, yeah of course um, I just finished 29 days I think five hauls six if you count this back this back haul um, and I just cleared this is um, this is net without including like my truck payment and like insurance stuff like that uh, but you're including fuel so fuels already been deducted um, I just cleared over six thousand dollars over the last 29 days so I know that I had some learning curves when, when I was choosing routes and, and whatnot um, but there's a lot of potential that potential gets limited if you think shiny new things are a must-have instead of viewing them as a vanity so just know you don't need a shiny new pickup truck that's going to be a thousand dollar payment or that's going to be a two, three thousand dollar payment if you're running all the time. Uh, it just makes it so you have less money in your pocket. Uh, the caveat to that is you go the used route, you know, with any business endeavor I've taken uh, in the past, there's a risk and there's a reward. So uh, you have to be planning for your risks. Uh, there's going to be issues that are going to come up. I know that there are going to be things that break down on this. Uh, I've already got, what am I, I'm somewhere between $500 to $1,000 set aside right now um, just from 15% push it over. So when that gets done, uh, when I get done paying the $1,000 bond that the company I 
I drive for, and I think they set aside whatever percentage, like this last run was $149 that they took out. Um, so I'm going to take some of that percentage that I'm already not seeing, and I'm gonna increase my maintenance budget to where I'll be saving 20 to 25%, uh, but still seeing a 5% increase in profit. So you just have to be smart, you have to be savvy, uh, and you have to be willing to accept and take the risks that may potentially come up. But you can definitely make money in it. Uh, I'm totally new to the game, and I'd say I had a decently successful month and I know that there's a lot of room for improvement and I wasn't like out on the road gone all the time I did a lot of short like 500 mile run trips in the beginning because I was just trying to get my feet wet and it was kind of go out get it it's on my way home I can be back uh, so I never really had to sleep in my truck or anything until I got into a Colorado run which was like a, a two-day trip and then this one which was four days in total and then I'll have about a thousand miles or 1300 miles of uh, deadhead going back home so uh, if you have any questions again if you're if you you're interested in this stuff uh, drop me a comment you can shoot me a, an email and again I can give you the the newbies perspective um, but I have a decently savvy business mind from my past endeavors uh, with growing a business from the ground up and, and really investing in that business mindset through mentorships and uh, masterminds and whatnot. So, uh, this is a, a pretty sweet gig. You, you get to travel wherever you want and the pay is decently good if you make smart choices. So. That's all I got. Again, comment, subscribe, do whatever that YouTube stuff is. And I will keep pushing out videos because there's nothing else to do when you're driving all day. All right, guys. Until the next time. Some bonus uh, content. So I talked about risks and rewards. And so it's a continuum, right? Uh, if this and that and so as I'm driving through Oregon I'm gonna end up going down Nevada and then into uh, California dropping off somewhere some suburb um, I think northeast of LA uh, it's beautiful to look at like I'm loving it uh, I don't know if you can kind of see behind me but uh two things as far as the risk so the reward would be is I'm picking up you know an extra 900 and some dollars which is covering all of my fuel and then making it even that much more profitable um, so the the risk would be that I'm getting eight to nine miles a gallon so normally on the runs I've done so far I'm averaging between 11 to somewhere in the 12s loaded so, uh, so that that's a risk uh, and then one of the things more I think more importantly is the risk of this terrain up and down uh, is what type of mechanical stress is it putting my truck under? So, is it worth it to have more wear and tear? Or, you know, are there other routes or, you know, certain routes that you want to avoid because you just, you don't need that type of stress on your vehicle? Because, you know, like I, uh, my mechanic had mentioned with the turbo on here uh, you know when we were uh, testing it out trying to figure out what was wrong with it when I initially bought it uh, he had just made a comment about you know not letting it get up to 40 psi he's like man you're gonna blow blow the turbos off it or whatever he said I'm 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 not mechanically inclined so 
you know, whatever. But, so as I, what I took away from that is I never want to see my turbos kick in to where they're above 30 PSI. Whether that adds any more wear or tear on the truck or not, I don't know. But I know that if I can drive this baby like a freaking grandma just cruising through town, then I'm going to get more out of it in terms of just mileage without breakdowns and that's even more money in my pocket because I don't have to tap into my maintenance fee or savings. So those are the things that you want to look at in terms of risk reward is you know like is it worth coming out all the way out west and I would say from my haul so far, uh, adding the extra stress just due to the terrain. Uh, is it worth it when you potentially can have a breakdown and you're out here and like where I'm at right now in Oregon, I mean there's like a little farmhouse right here, uh, like there's nothing. Looks awesome. But I would hate to see what it, what it costs to tow this. Uh, and what you know whatever the, the issue would be to get it fixed so uh, you just want to break down those risk rewards and that's where uh, that Excel spreadsheet that I have uh, comes in for me is so after I get enough variety in because I'm tracking miles uh, my miles per gallon I'm tracking the actual like the gas costs and what's my actual profit all you know what size of trailers blah 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 um, is I'm going to be able to pinpoint the most profitable uh, routes whether it be the actual route itself or uh, the, the trailer because of its length or weight uh, or a combination so I'll kind of be able to find the sweet spot where I can get the most money for the least amount of risk. So you just want to think about those things in terms of, you know, driving my truck into the ground. Is it worth it? And even if you have a, a new truck or one of the leases, is it worth it to be down for however long to fix something when? Again, if you drove it like a grandma, uh, you may have never had said issue. So just some, some food for thought as I was driving and enjoying the view. Um, and I'll share some of the forward video of it too. But, you know, is it worth it? I, I'm i kind of leaning towards probably not. I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. All right, that's it.